All right. Um, today we are going to try to finish the application that we looked at before. And we will then, if we have time left, we will spend time talking about the next assignment. So let me bring up the application we were working on before. And we'll take a look at it, and we'll go from there. I'll show you the emulator on this if I need to show you the emulator. to explore the behavior for a long press, all right? Um, different, distinct from a click, and it also has a listener different than the click. So we will take a look at that and see how that works. If you remember, that brings up a dialogue. That's something new in this um, example that we hadn't seen in previous examples. Because we got a late start today, I'll go a little past five after six. So we should probably go to about 20 after six to get that in, get in our proper time. Say just ain't working.
machines racing, whichever one finishes fast will be the one I show you first. Well, this is thinking. I'm actually going to go and open up the code in a Notepad++ editor. All right. This is our main activity. What we're interested today is in the long press uh, and that listener. Where does a long press litner, listener get set? It gets set when we define our recycler view, viewer and set the adapter. Right here, we set the adapter that says, I'm going to create my searches adapter. I'm passing it tags. Tags, if you remember, is the data source. Uh, item click listener and item long click listener are going to be the two listeners that we have in, um, in um, associated with each row, with each item in our recycler view. So, in my searches adapter, when I create a new one, uses this constructor, gets past this, I set the tags uh, variable of this, and I set the click listener to this and the long click listener to that. When I go through and create each item, and we talked a little bit about how it creates the item and so on and so forth, um, when it creates each item, one of the things it does is it sets the on click listener for the new item it created. Remember, this instruction, the, the view holder that it is making, um, gets made for every row in the recycler view. So a new view holder is made for every row, and that view holder has, among other things, the um, views that comprise that. In our case, it's only a text view, and we're setting a value to one of the tags from the tag array and we set the click listener. Here, we set, we do the inflating and returning. Here, on binding, we set the text for it. And here, on the constructor, we set the listener. So therefore, try to make sure I'm on screen. When we have this, you can see it, when we long press on an item, we get this dialog box. I hope that shows up. All right. So to see what happens there, we're going to go back to the main activity and look at the code for, not the on-click listener, but the on long click listener. All right. So, what we do first of all is on long click, that's really the only method in the interface is the on click, the other methods we have added. We first of all grab the value of the tag. All right. Because what we want to do is we want to create a dialog to say edit, delete, or uh, share this particular tag. So we grab the tag. 
How do we do that? By grabbing associated with the view the text that comes from the text view that was long clicked. Notice we're casting that text view, I'm sorry, we're, tas we're, we're casting that view to text view. Because we know that what they've long pressed on, we know the, the value of this argument that gets passed into the on long click lister, we know is a text view. Because that's the only thing in that recycler view that has, uh, that we can long, long press on. So therefore we know that that has to be a text view. We want to be able to treat it like a text view. All right. All that the on click listener goes, on long click listener knows is that there was a view that was long clicked. Well, we know that it's a text view, therefore we cast it as a text view and get the value of the tag from the text associated with that. So whatever is on the text is used to create this variable tag. We then build our alert box. All right? And that's going to build this dialog right here that says share, edit, or delete the search tag as ASP.NET. So, we set the title as being share, edit, delete title from the string file and the tag. This is a little nifty trick on the get string. The, de the, the get string refers to our string file that percentage s simply means is used by the get string function to substitute the value of the string for the percent s. That way we can make a message and say we're going to slip in a value of a variable in this part of the string. So it's a neat little trick that they do in the string file by putting that backslash quote percent s backslash quote. That allows them to, to sneak a variable in there. And so what they do if you can see on the uh, dialog, it includes the name of the tag there. All right. So we set the title of, of the dialog. We grab the items from our array dialog uh, items. Where is our, our array dialog items? That comes from the array XML file. So share, edit, and delete. That's why we have share, edit, and delete on there. We then create a on-click listener for the dialog. All right. So when we set the items, we supply two things. We supply a array that contains those items, and we supply an on-click listener. And we create it this way by saying new dialog interface on click listener. Again, this is one of those anonymous classes. We're not declaring a new class and giving it a name. We're simply saying, oh yeah, this is a dialog on click listener. In order to do that, we have to do what? We have to include code for an on click event. All right. Now, this on-click event gets passed a number of things. It gets passed a dialog. We could remember potentially use this same listener for several dialogs. So the dialog that it gets passed will tell us what dialog the interaction was on. But most important, that's not really relevant in this case since we only have one dialog. Most important in this case is we get an int, which is which. That is which 
item has been selected. So if they click the zero, they click the zeroth item, then we call share search. If they click edit, we populate the two text boxes on our original view, if you remember that, uh, the edit and the, um, uh, the, the tag edit and the query edit. And if they click two, we go and delete it. So we're going to look at these three functions now. Um, share search. Actually, we're only going to look at two functions, right? We're going to look at share search, and we're going to look at delete search. What happens here if they press edit? We simply fill up those ta the, the tags in the different, we fill up those text boxes with the value of tags. So if I press edit here, it takes and puts in those text boxes those values. And we're just good to go. All right? The button is, and we went through this logic the other day of how that works. How when we save it, it looks to see if it's already out there and it will overwrite it otherwise. If we change the tag, it actually creates a new entry in there. So we really don't need to go over that part because we have a pretty good idea of what goes on there. If you have any questions, we can go and review that. What we're interested in is share tag and delete tag. Finally, we set a cancel button so that they can back out of the dialogue if they chose not to do anything. We wouldn't want them to force them to go and do something if it didn't. So therefore, we set a negative button to be canceled so that they could back out in case of, uh, in case that they don't really want to do anything. Then we go and we build that dialog box and show it. So that pops up. This is what's known as a dialog boxes are sometimes called modal boxes, which means you have to do them in order. In other words, when a dialog pops up, we can't go like and do something on the screen behind it. We have to answer that dialog before we continue. All right, let's look at share search. Share search creates a URL, actually encodes a URL, our string search URL. Let's see what that is. Oh, that's simply our. Um, that's simply the, the full Twitter search. And we plug in the tag. This is the same sort of thing we did when we actually went and ran that. But we're, cre we're not creating a, an intent to um, run the query. We're creating an intent to send the query. And therefore, I create an action of my intent is action send. So that's what we're doing. So whatever applications are, hand, are, are written on the Android device that can handle action send, that's the one or ones that will get called. Remember, it's potentially, it's possible to have more than one uh, application configured to handle a certain intent, in which case you typically get a dialog that the system generates that asks you how you want to do it. Classic case of this is if I had a web browser on my device and I had the mobile Twitter app. Both of them would be capable of doing a Twitter search. So if I had both of them installed, it would allow me, uh, or it would ask me which one I wanted to use. And did I want to only use it once or did I want to use it always? We have a couple other things here. Put extra. With an, event, uh, with an intent, sometimes you want to supply additional information, all right, along with it. So in this case, we want to share the message. Uh, we want to share this with something. This, we're creating a subject of the message, and we're creating a, uh, a share message. Notice that the subject of the message is Twitter search that might interest you. So if we send this as a text or as an email or whatever, that's what we're sending it. The message itself we're doing using the same format scheme of using the pound sign S. And then we use get string, or I'm sorry, yeah, get string. 
and we have the string that we want, and we have the value of the item that we want to place in that percent string. So it's a good way to format stuff. Again, just to review it, we have our string, and we have back, uh, we'll no, this one down here. We have percent %s. What that allows, and when that is used as part of the format uh, or get string, it will take the first string value and stuff it in there. All right? That's an alternative to like concatenating, concatenating variables together. You could just as well do it as by concatenate your variables together. But it's, it makes for a little bit cleaner code, especially if you have four or five different items that you want to slip into the message. You know, if you want to create a message, if you want to create a string to send, and there are three or four variables, you can use that uh, get string and pass several different string variables to it, and it'll get pl uh, placed in the appropriate spot. All right, there's the intent, and we go and we create the intent, and we actually start the activity. At this point, again, if your browser is only configured, and I'm sorry, not browser, if your device is only configured with one application that can handle this intent, it will be opened. If your device has multiple um, applications enabled or, or installed that can handle uh, this intent, then it will ask the user which one they want to use. Do you want to use it this time or use always? So this is virtually the same as the perform the search. The only difference is the details of the uh, intent that we create. Deleting, what do you suppose the deleting is going to do? What is the deleting going to do? Let's think about deleting. Well, where are we, what, what do we have to update? We have to update two things. What are the two things that we have to update? We have to update the display, we have to update what's on the screen, and we also have to update where it gets saved. So it gets saved in shared preferences. So we have to take it out of shared preferences, and we also have to refresh our recycle view. All right? So we're going to have code in here that I would think does three things. First of all, it's going to confirm the deletion, because a good application should confirm the deletion. All right? If you say that you want to delete it, it should do two things then. It should delete it out of shared preferences and then delete it out of the display. This is where I, it's useful, I think, to think through exactly what it is you need to do before you do it. Planning is one of those things that's critical and it's important. And in this case, remember that we have two things. We have the display of the data and we have the data source of the data. And if we really want to delete something, we have to get it out of two places. Both of those are going to be relatively easy, right? We create a confirm dialog. All right. Some of the similar things that we do, because this is a confirm dialog, we don't have options. We just have a yes or no, right? We have our message as a confirm message with the tag in it. And here's our confirm message. Are you sure you want to delete? And then the value of the tag gets plugged in there. On click, remember, you can only answer yes or cancel in this case, yes or, or no, and no takes you out, all right? So yes or cancel. If we click on cancel, it takes us out. If we click on yes, what it will do is it will remove it from the shared preferences. That's what this does, creates a shared preference editor goes and says to remove that tag, and then finally make it finalized, apply. That's what the apply does. So these three things are related to getting rid of it out of the shared preferences. All right? The other two things are related to getting rid of it out of the display. 
And that's really easy, all right? All we have to do is remove it from the tag array and then notify the adapter that the data has changed, all right? Remember we did this after an add or an edit when we've saved it. When we've saved it after an add or an edit, we do the same thing. We manipulate the tags array and then we tell the adapter, hey, the data has changed. That's all we have to do. And then the adapter code kicks in and does everything it needs to do and does the rebind and recreates the view holders, blah, 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 blah. And it will start out and it will give us a clean recycler view that has that item deleted from it. All right? So that's the nice thing. Each component does its own job. And there's communication and binding between some components. Namely, in this case, the data source, which resides in that tags array, and the recycler view. And all we have to do to get the recycler view to update itself is change the value of that array and then tell the recycler list, all right, hey, um, your data has changed. Or tell the adapter for the recycler list that, hey, your data has changed, then it will go through the process of recreating it. Because it knows if the data has changed, I have to go and recreate myself. All right? So that's this application in a nutshell. All right? Do we have any questions about it? Yes. Oh, so if I said get string and I had a percent sign s and I didn't give a string, I think you get an error. I think you get a compile error because that tells it. Or maybe you just put an empty string now. I'm not really sure. Um, let me do it on this machine because this machine has it loaded correctly. So if I go in and... I'm going to look at where it creates the adapter, or not the adapter, the dialog. How weird, the code looks different on this, on this one. Oh. I am guessing it would give it with an empty string, because it's not complaining in the compile. I guess that's something, uh, I, I guess that would be something to test. I'm not really sure. Other questions on this? What I'd like to do is talk about an assignment that um, my previous classes have had a love-hate relationship with. All right? They liked it in one regard, but it also was frustrating and annoying at times. So that's the way most challenges are, right? You know, you like them and they're fun, but they can also anger you. At some times. This is a, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a blackjack game. All right, it's gonna be simple. We'll see how far we take it. Does anyone have an objection to creating a card game for religious or other reasons? If you do, I'll find an alternative um, assignment. Um, 
I, I honestly had a student in one of my classes, we generated, uh, I, we used a web page like to generate a birthday card. And they were from a, a religion that didn't celebrate birthdays. And they said, can I substitute something else for it? And it's like, yeah, you can make an invitation or whatever. So I try to be sensitive to that. So if someone has opposed to gambling or whatever with, with blackjack, we're not gambling really mo real money here. Uh, but if you have an issue with that, then, then we can figure something out. So. Here's what I want to do. Is everyone familiar with the rules of blackjack? All right. And if you're not, we can we can answer the question. I can answer some questions that you have. Here's what I want to consider for the basic design of the game. I want you to create a screen. And again, I'm just sketching out what I want the screen to look like. General, you can create it the way that you want to, and you can make it look really good if you want to, and, and so on. I'm just ba uh, showing the bare functionality. Our first goal, and we'll see how where we want to go from there, but our first goal is to just play a hand of blackjack and tell me if I've won or if I've lost. All right? Or if it's a push, I guess. A push means you lose, so I guess you win or lose. I want a button that says play game. When you do that, it should show you two cards. And it will show it to you face up. So you'll see, you'll see what the two cards are. So an ace. That's your cards. It will also show you the dealer's cards. But it'll show one of them down, where you can't see, and the other one face up. What you have to do then is there'll be a hit and a stand button. Or stay. What do they say? Stand or stay? I don't know. It doesn't matter. All right. So, if you want to hit, you hit the hit button. And you get another card. You go until you press stand. You press stand, then the dealer has rules. The dealer doesn't get a choice. All right? So, you don't have to worry about randomizing or anything as far as the dealer's cards. The dealer's role is if it is 17 or greater, then the dealer hit, or the dealer stays. If the dealer is less than 17, the dealer takes a hit. So algorithmic. You don't have to write any, any randomizing to like have the dealer play aggressively or, or conservatively or whatever. The dealer's role is chosen. The dealer then, by the rules, goes and does it. When it's done, it will show you their card. And let's say the dealer had a 9. 1917, you would lose. So in a nutshell, that's like the bare bones of what the screen should look like. An area to show your cards, an area to show the dealer's cards, whether you've won or lost after the game is, a play, a hit, and a stand. Now, again, you can make it smart so that the hit and stand don't show until you click play. So you click, you click play, then the hit and stand appear. All right? And maybe even the play disappears. All right? You go until you either stand or bust. What does bust mean? means greater than 21, if the total of your cards equals 21 uh, or higher. The dealer then goes until they bust or they are 17 uh, or above. At that point, it evaluates. If you busted, you lost. If the dealer busted, he lost. Otherwise, whoever's closer to 21, if it's a tie, you lose. Okay. One, what would I, why would I say this? One little detail that you have to account for in this 
is that a ace can count either as 1 or 11. All right? So, in a case like this, I either have 8 or 18. So I could take a hit, let's say, and get a 10. Well, I'm not busted. You might say I have 28. Well, no, then I'll say that ace is a 1, and then I have 18. All right? So an ace can either be 1 or 11. That's a little, that's not a huge thing, but it's something your, your code has to account for. All right? So here's what I want you to do in the first step. I want you to think about what you're going to need to do this. I'll tell you two things that you need, all right? You don't have to worry about telling me about the strings file or any of those files. I do want you to concern yourself about what layout file you need, all right? So, layout. How many? You might have multiple layout files in this. For each of them, tell me the purpose and what's in them. All right. So describe the layout files. You don't have to give me the XML form. But, for example, I might say that I have, I'll tell you what I would say, what I might say for this one. I might say I have a layout that contains a vertical linear layout. It contains three horizontal linear layouts. And it also contains the text, the text, and the text. All right? So I could say something like that. I have a linear layout for the main playing field. It has a horizontal layout that contains three buttons. It has a, hor or it has a text field that contains a label saying that it's my cards. A horizontal label for uh, my cards. A label for, so I want to describe like on that level. So it's somewhat detailed, but you don't have to actually write the XML code. And you don't have to give me the properties or anything like that. And I want that for each layout file, because, surprise, you might have more than one layout file. All right? So layout files. For each of them, the purpose and what is in them. The one, obviously, is going to be the main playing field. All right? And if you have any additional ones, that would be in there as well. I then want to know the Java classes. All right? And this might not be obvious what Java classes you need. I think we're going to spend some time on Thursday discussing what Java classes that you need. All right? Um, you definitely need an activity. You're also going to need, um, you might need other classes. And you should describe in there what events you're going to have, what, what, what methods you're going to have. I said events, I meant methods. What methods you're going to have. So for example, this might have on click listers for the three buttons. for example, and it might have some other things as well. Now, in my opinion, this is, there's too much stuff to put into a, just the activity, especially when you consider the idea of reusability. We might want to come and create a, another card game, all right? Uh, and if we did another card game, um, there's a chance that we would want to reuse some of the components in this card game. So consider that as a possibility as well. All right? Um, on Thursday, what we will do is we'll spend some time, we'll either discuss it as a class or we'll break into groups or group 
depending on how many people are here. Uh, and we'll discuss it, uh, you'll discuss it among yourselves to think of the design of what you'll, you'll want to have. My hope is that if we could do a good job discussing it, it will simply be up to you folks to implement it. Or, or not to implement it, to, to, to write up the design. All right? Because you might come up with some sketches on paper or whatever, uh, but uh, it'll be your task then to... Uh, to uh, simply document the design, and then we can go ahead to the next step, all right, which will probably be the next week's assignment. Uh, we're going to spend a few weeks on this, all right, so this isn't going to be like a one-weeker. You're going to spend some time on it. But I do want to have a good plan, and I want us to work on the plan together, and I want to make sure that we've, I've reviewed the plan and we have a good idea of what we want to do before we go forward. Let me show you a way to document your design. The XML files you can just sort of write up as a list. For the Java classes, a good way to do that is in, and I'll post this to Canvas, in a class diagram. Class diagram shows what classes you have and it shows the relationships between classes. We may or may not have inheritance here. We haven't really talked about inheritance. Um, if you chose, you could write this using inheritance, but that's not a requirement. And a class diagram basically looks like this. It shows the classes, it shows the properties for those classes, and it shows the methods for those classes. So that would be a good way to sort of communicate the uh, details of the design. So Thursday we'll discuss it, either as a group or as a, either in groups or as a class. Any questions about anything that we went over today? All right, that's all I had for today. I hope I can get my laptop back. And I hope I can, if not, get this one working so that I can display it so I can actually be running Android Studio. Because this one allegedly runs Android Studio, but it takes forever to do it. All right. We'll see you on Thursday. Is anyone staying for lab? Okay. We'll see you on Thursday.